Okay, uh, so now let's talk about pandas. Uh, we kind of used, we have used pandas in the uh, Python class. So if you still remember that pandas is one of the most popular um, Python data analysis library, uh, like NumPy, Scikit-learn, etc. Uh, specifically, pandas has a very popular uh, date frame that's called date frame. So that is a way that pandas organize all the data. So it is pandas date frame is a two dimensional labeled data structure with columns of different data type. And once we load data into data frame, and we can use a lot of building functions like calculate average, mean, etc. And also we can slice the data, make selections, etc. So uh, data frame is very, very easy to use and also has been used a lot uh, in Python. And pandas can read data uh, into data frame format uh, from multiple resources like uh, last semester, we load data from CSV file and also Excel files, if I remember right. Um, we can also load data from SQL query. So that's why that I said pandas is extremely useful and helpful that when we come to this uh, uh, database class this semester. So for those of you who never used uh, pandas, so you can check this tutorial so that has it's uh, still a, a notebook that we used last semester, which showing some basics of using pandas. So here, so I'm going to show that how we can use pandas to load query. So first we import pandas Python library. And if you remember last, last semester, we are using read CSV file, I think, and we tell where the CSV file is. And this semester, we are going to read the SQL statement, the function that will pass the loaded query into, into a data frame uh, structure. Um, so in that process, you have to tell two variables. So the first one is that SQL statement, which we you can use the one that we already defined, or you can use a new SQL statement. And also you need to pass the connection um, variables, which is created by using post GRE circle Python library. And once you have that data frame, data frame, and you can just call the data. So here we are using slicing again. You can see it's very nice that uh, we have the variable names and also we have all the values. Okay, so let's do it here uh, in our notebook. So first, I'm going to give it a new section name. So pandas part. Uh, so first, let's import pandas. And I think by default, it should be already being installed. Okay. And next, let's load the data and also pass that one to a data frame variable. So we call data frame pandas dot read SQL query. And now in this process, we are going to pass this SQL statement and also this connection variable. Okay, so make sure that uh, uh, your notebook is still um, open and also you didn't close your notebook. So if you close your notebook, you have to uh, run those uh, execute those pass, those cells again so that you can make sure that connection and those SQL statement are live. Uh, and next, let's pass that SQL statement and also the connection. And let's just call the data frame. So here I use uh, comma so that I want to show all the data. Okay, so now it's pretty nice. So it shows all the data in our database. Uh, so if I just want top 10, so we can have the top 10 database. And we can also slice, uh, select the column. So for example, if I just want to use the bed, want to see the, the bedrooms, so I can treat that one as a dictionary. Okay, so now it only retains the bedrooms. Okay, so the handers is very, very flexible to, to play with. 
And also in the uh, Python class, we also mentioned the data visualization functions in a data frame, so which is the plot function. Uh, plot function is actually a web of the matplotlib uh, library, but we can use plot um, directly in data frame. So it's a con um, plot can create some uh, visualizations with all the columns with labels. And by default, the production will create a line chart. And next semester, we are talking, we are talking more about the visualizations. Uh, so line chart is a great to visualize the trends of the variables. Okay, so here let's see one example. So here, let's define a query that we want to get the average price per year. So here we define a query as select built year of the house being built in, and we calculate the average price. So that is the aggregation function in SQL as average price uh, from still from this public dot house price um, table. And we want group by the year of house being built. And we also order by the year of house being built. Okay. And we didn't specify descending or ascending. Uh, so uh, in this case, by default, it will be ascending. And next, we can visualize the data. So first, we get a data frame. So here I use a different data frame name and also SQL name so that we all know that what each SQL statement and also each data uh, frame stand for. And again, we're using pandas.read SQL query so that we put the SQL statement and also it has the same connection information to that data frame variable. And next, we can just simply plot. And we have to specify, okay, for the X, we want the year, so the year that has been built. And then for the Y, we want the average price, okay? And now our, in our notebook, and we all see this visualization that has been created. So we can see that there was a peak in that year and also another peak in that year. Okay, uh, so let's try that one on our um, SageMix. So I call it SQL, so AVG price per year equals. So now we are going to uh, define that SQL statement. Okay, uh, so I just type finish this SQL statement here. Uh, you can pause the video and also finish your SQL statement. So basically, we select the average price per year. So if you refer, if you check your, our previous slide of last week, so uh, we are using a group function. So we are also using the average, which is the aggregation function. So we can get average price per year. And next, we are going to pass that one to our data frame. So here I just use data frame. So uh, however, the best practice is that for each data frame, you should give a different specific name. Um, read SQL query. So here we pass our SQL statement. In this case, it will be this one. And we also pass a connection. Okay, and let's first look at how the data frame looks like. Okay, so you can see here we have the house of the uh, the year of the house being built, and also we have the average price. Okay, so that gave you a table. And as I said, data frame can also create uh, use a plot function, and so create a line chart. So by default, data frame dot plot uh, will give you a line chart. So here what we tell that x equals uh, the house that's been built. And y equals the average price. So that is this one. OK, and so now you can see we have exactly the same line chart. That is pretty cool in your notebook. And also, uh, so that also one advantage of analyzing data in Python versus in uh, PG admin, because in Python, we can visualize the data um, and the visualization will be 
more efficient than just looking at the tables. Okay, so let's look at some other simple visualizations. So we have tried those one in the Python class. So the first one is histogram. Uh, so histogram is a grid. It's normally used to show the visualize a statistical distribution of a single variable. So uh, I think the, the procedure is that first you define the query. Uh, if you want to visualize the pre previous data, you feel free to do that. So however, here we can just we define a new query that we select all the price and all the area from our table. And next, we can see that we can select the price only and also dot histogram, and that will create a histogram for us. So it's it's very easy and very pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, so let's see that one in our notebook. So first, let's define SQL. Here we want to get the price and also area, which equals. Uh, I believe this SQL statement is pretty simple. Okay, so basically we just select price and also area from the uh, cost price table. And next, I just use data frame uh, to load the data. So it costs handers read SQL query. So we pass that query into this read query function and we pass the connection. And let's just look at the result as a table first. Okay, and I think I have a typo. So puppy actually let's this should be a house price. So yeah, so when you have errors in your SQL, so it, it they will give you the same result. Errors. Okay, so now we have all the price and also all the areas. Okay, that's pretty nice. Uh, if I, I just want to see the price, so I can treat treat this one as a dictionary and I say okay, date frame price. Okay, so now I have all the price. And if I want to create histogram, so H I S T. So now I have this very nice histogram. And we can see that we have so many house records that price are lower than this range, 200,000. And also we have one extremely expensive house. Or two, actually, two extremely house. Expensive house. Scatplot. Uh, so scatplot is another type of chart that we used a lot. Uh, so that is used to visualize the correlation between two variables. Uh, so for example, here we are using the same query. So we select the price and our area. And here we want to see that how the price change uh, when the area change. So here we also load the data to our data frame. And we use a plot.scatter function. Here we see only okay, X representing the area and also Y representing the price. And now we can see there's a very strong positive relationship between price and area that when the house become bigger or the area become bigger, the house, the price become uh, higher. So the house will be more expensive. And let's try that one on our notebook. So because we are using the same query as, and also data frame stand for the already had the price and also area, so we can just use um, the data frame. So if you recall that data frame already have the price and also area right now, so we can just use the data frame directly. So dot plot dot scatter. And here we have tell x equals uh, area and also y equals price. Okay, make sure you are using the right quotation mark. Okay. So now you can see we have this very nice scatter plot. So I believe this will be more intuitive or more straightforward 
than it if you're just looking looking at the tables. Okay, uh, so that is kind of one advantage of analyzing data in Python. Uh, next semester we are we will talk about Tableau. So Tableau is a is far way easier than Python. So we can connect database to Tableau, and also we can do the similar analysis as we did here. Okay, so last one that we want to try is a bar chart. So bar chart is just simply compare the values in different categories. Uh, so here, for example, we are interested to see that um, which type of house has the highest average price. So to do that, first we need a SPL selection. We want to select the price per house type. So we see we we'll select the house type. And average price as average price from this house price um, table. And also we are using group by, so group by the house type. We also want to sort the house price, average house price. We see order by average price in the descending order. And next, we just pass uh, that query to this read SQL query function. And we get that, convert that one into a date frame. And once we have that data in date frame, I can, we can use plot.bar, so that will give us bar chart, where we can tell, okay, so X will be the house price, so will be those labels, and also Y will be the average price. Okay, so now we can see single family house has the highest average price. Okay, so let's try it here. So let's say first, let's define the SQL, which will get the average price per house type, okay? And now let's write that SQL very quick, okay? So so you, you may feel that, okay, so you have to be very familiar with SQL, then you can analyze the data in Python. Um, so let's do it, run that SQL code. Again, so I just use data frame uh, var variable equals handles dot read SQ, SQL query and the query will be this one and also we need pass a connection and let's look at the data first okay I, again I have a typo okay this should be public dot house price and another typo. Okay, and I should not have this comma. Okay, <laughs> house type. Okay, so now I have this nice uh, table. Okay, so it's, it's not bad, I mean, all these three columns. But if we want to create that, visualize that one in the bar chart, so plot bar, and y equals average price, x equals pulse type. I believe you will have more errors when you're doing this lecture demo, okay? Okay, pretty nice. And we also have a legend here. So single family home has the highest average price. Uh, someone who are familiar with pandas may have a question that why do you define such complicated uh, queries in SQL? Okay, so because if you if you check the tutorial that I provided, you will see that in pandas, you also have those group functions uh, mean function, etc. So why do you need to write that complicated query in SQL? Okay, so answer it, the answer is that when you have huge amount of data, doing those analysis, like uh, aggregation um, queries, will be far way faster in database. Okay, so doing those analysis will be more efficient in database rather than in Python memory. So the best practice is that you just do all the query, all the aggregations in your database first, and next you, you 
um, test the aggregated result to pandas and for visualization. Okay, so that is a best practice. So if you want to do all those, those calculations in pandas, if your data is very huge, then you need a very uh, powerful computer, a big memory, a big fast CPU, etc. So that is not the best practice. So if you have small sample size, no, no problem. You can use pandas to do the calculations. Otherwise, I would always use the database to do the uh, queries or do the calculations.